Hey guys, what is up? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at piecewise functions. Now, if you haven't already watched the first two videos, uh, go ahead and click the link up here and over here. Basically, I show kind of what the basic idea of graphing is, what functions are, and we also look at the uh, point slope form. So go ahead and watch those videos if you haven't already done that. So piecewise functions, what are these? So they are basically equations that take on two different forms. So your y value is gonna equal three x squared minus two whenever you input an x value that is either less than or equal to one. So it's kind of like a, uh, a uh, constraint on the equation. Whenever x is in this domain, this less than or equal to one area, it's gonna look like this green thing. Now, whenever x's are greater than one, it's gonna look like this red thing. It's gonna be two x. Now, I went ahead over here, I wrote quadratic and linear. The green one is actually a quadratic type equation because you have an x squared in the equation. So anytime you have x squared, it's gonna be quadratic. Anytime you have uh, y equals mx plus b, it's gonna be linear like we saw in the other video. This is actually y equals mx plus b, and you'll see in a second. But just kinda wanna take a step back just to refresh your memory. This f of x, this is the same thing as y. And remember, y is our output. So you're gonna put a value in the equation and it's gonna spit out an answer, and that answer is what we're gonna call y. But you input your x values into different equations when there are different inputs if that makes sense. So I just wanted to throw that out there. So back to this green one. So the green is gonna be a quadratic, like we said, because there's an x squared in there. And when you graph the quadratic, it's gonna take this sort of U-shaped thing. That's what it's gonna look like whenever you graph the whole thing. And that would be without cutting off any part of the graph, just the whole thing. Now the linear one, that's just like we said, like we saw in the last video, it's gonna be a, uh, a straight line, and this line has a constant slope. Remember, slope is rise divided by run. So that's why m equals two. So you're gonna see, I, I was gonna show you, so y equals mx plus b is, that, that's what linear means, right? So we know that this red one is linear because it's actually y equals two x plus zero. So the b here is zero and your m is two. It's just not so obvious when you look at it at first. So the basic idea is we're gonna plot both of these graphs on top of each other and we're gonna combine them into one big graph. That's why it's called piecewise because you've got a piece of each function within the graph drawing. So that's basically what it is. Uh, so before we actually construct our graph, we probably should pick a couple of points for each function so that when I draw them, we'll be able to draw them properly. Because if you don't have any points, you don't have a graph, right? So what I'm basically gonna do is graph each one of these, but I'm gonna ignore these constraints. So let's just pretend that this wasn't here. Let's just say that the problem is, hey, y equals three x squared minus two, make a graph of that, okay. And then maybe y equals two x, make a graph of that. So I'm just gonna make a graph of each one put them on the same plot, and I'm not gonna worry about this X business for right now. So let's just go ahead and uh, make the, uh, the plot. But before we can make the plot, you have to make a uh, kind of a table of values. So I'm kind of just gonna randomly select X, po X points. And usually X is negative one, X is zero, X is positive one. Those three are, are good points to kind of start with. So let's do that. X is negative one, zero, and positive one. I just randomly picked those because I just want to see what the form is going to look like. So let's do the first one. So the first one, y equals 3x squared minus 2. Okay, so if we plug in an x value of negative 1, what's going to be our result here? This is going to be 3 times negative 1 squared minus 2. Now, anytime you have a negative number that is raised to an even power like two, the result of it is gonna be positive. So negative one squared is the same thing as positive one. So you've got three times positive one, that's three minus two. So that's the same thing as three minus two. So three minus two, that's the same thing as one, right? 
All right, let's go to the next point, which is zero. Three times zero squared minus two. Anything times zero is just zero, right? So this whole thing kind of goes away. That whole thing is zero. So you got zero minus two. So that's the same thing as zero minus two. And what is zero minus two? That's obviously negative two. And the last point is just x equals one. So that's three times one squared minus two. Three times one is three minus two is the same thing as three minus two. So three minus two is the same thing as one. So there's our three points for the first function, the first part of the function, I should say. So now let's do our other t table here. So this one's gonna be y equals two x. This one's gonna be a lot easier, a lot less thinking. And we're gonna pick the same points, negative one, zero, and one. So what is this gonna be? Whoops, lost my cap there. Put that back on, that way. So y equals two x. So two times the x value that we put in. So we're putting in negative one, so it's gonna be two times negative one. What's that? That's obviously negative two. What if, what if we put x equals zero into that equation? What's that gonna be? Two times zero, well that's, anything times zero is zero, right? So boom, it's zero. And now let's do the last point. Two times the input of one is just positive two. So there we go, negative two, zero, two. So now we've got two different equations with two sets of y values, and we can put them onto one big O graph. Let me just uh, pull out this so I can kind of have some more room to work with down here. So let me just make a, uh, a graph, try to make it legible. All right, so remember the horizontal axis, this thing here, this is our x axis. And the vertical up and down is the y axis. So I'm just gonna pick, go ahead and put my points. So one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. So I've picked some points there. Okay, so I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is because uh, remember we've got these restrictions here where the the function only applies whenever it's a certain range and all that i'm just going to draw it in pencil and then i'm going to erase the part of the graph that i have to delete because you got to delete part of it off based on these constraints so let's just pretend like we don't have to delete anything and i'm going to use my pencil so let's first let's do this 3x squared minus 2 thing so we know when x is negative 1 so if we go to x negative 1 y has to be positive 1 so that's right there now, when x is 0, y is negative 2. So here's x is 0. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. So what did I do? The first thing I did was, I wasn't looking. Sorry, guys. x is negative 1, y is positive 1. So I put that point there. The second point is x is 0, y is negative 2. So here's x is 0, y negative 2. I jumped down twice. Boom. There it is. So I've got these two points. Then my last point, x is 1, y is 1. So x is 1, y is 1. So I went to x1, y1, put another point. So now I'm just gonna connect these. Because uh, if I just connect these three, it's gonna make like a small u. But we know in real life, if we were to pick more points, maybe not, maybe if we went negative 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, yada, yada, we just picked a, a lot more points, it would make an entire graph. So I'm just gonna pretend, I'm gonna put the line through the points that we made, but I'm gonna extend it further out, pretending like you know we, we also did the other points, but we know we only did these, right? So what's that, what's that gonna look like? So it's gonna look something like this. So I put these arrows because it goes out to infinity, right? We just picked these three points to get the graph started off. Sorry, can't figure out where I wanna put it. So that, this is the, uh, the green one, y equals three x squared minus two. Now, if we look at the constraints, it's only true when x is less than or equal to one. So what I like to do is go straight to x equals one. That's this point here. So basically, I cannot use this graph for any x values that are above that because it only works when, s is, when x is less than or equal to one. You know, let me just write, write it up here. We said y equals three x squared minus two when x is less than or equal to one, and we have y equals two x, 
when x is greater than 1. So x is less than or equal to 1 is the only time this thing applies. So all this stuff above there, I'm actually going to erase because it doesn't apply as per the rules of the game, right? So it only works when x is less than or equal to 1. So I'm going to highlight this part in green to kind of go along with what I, the color coding I had before. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a solid dot there. And the reason you put your solid dot is because you had a less than or equal to symbol right there. Anytime you have a solid dot, that means that this point is included on the graph. So what does that mean? If, if, if I were to ask you, hey, what is the value of the piecewise function when x equals 1? Would you, would you use this function or that function? You want to use this one up here, right? Because this one is the one you use when x is less than or equal to 1. So if you look at the graph, you want it to be a solid dot. A good way to remember it is the, the thing that has the less than or equal to symbol that thing is always going to have a solid dot on it because whenever you have to think about how much ink you have to write down on the paper for a solid dot you got to put a lot of ink to make a solid dot right and you have to also put a lot of ink compared to this thing when you when you have to write less than or equal to compared to just less than the the one that has the equal to sign has more ink in it right so it kind of goes along with the the more ink analogy on the paper that's why this one, the x greater than one, is less ink, right? So you're gonna have an open circle for that one because an open circle requires less, length, less ink. That's kind of how I remember it. But it's technically because the, uh, this one is included in the graph and that one is not included. The one that's not included is gonna be a circle, an open circle. So you're gonna have open circle like that for a less than, sorry. You're going to have open circle whenever it's just a less than or greater than, and you're going to have a solid circle when it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, like that. That's kind of the rule. But let's go back and get this last, last one here, y equals 2x. So we said x is negative 1, x is negative 1, y is going to be negative 2, y is negative 2, and we have x is 0, y is 0, and then we have x is 1, y is positive 2. That's right there. So this is actually a, uh, a straight line. I'm gonna put my ruler to help me with this. So, remember I only picked these three points, but I went ahead and drew the whole thing because if I were to pick more points, it would form the rest of the line. So let's go to the constraints. X is greater than one is the only time that applies. So let me go to X equals one. That's this point right here. So, because it's a greater than symbol, that means less ink was used on the paper to write that thing. Therefore, I have to use an open circle at that location. I use an open circle. And I only use this equation for x's that are larger than 1. So the only part of the graph I keep is that. Everything else I can actually just erase because uh, it's not a part of the equation. It's because of the way the piecewise function was defined. So let's go ahead and make this color properly. So that is what it's going to look like. That's an open circle. Sorry, it kind of looks like it's closed, but it's actually an open circle. So this is kind of gap there. And that's all there is to it, guys. You just kind of do that. Now, another question your teacher may ask you is, what is the domain and range? The domain and range. D is for domain, R is for range. So the domain is basically what X values exist on this graph. In other words, what X values throughout any possible values, what X values have an associated Y value with it. So if I, if I started here at the origin and I went left, I just went this way, what X, do all those X values have an associated Y value? I'm pretty sure they do. Every X value has a Y value that goes along with it. Same thing over here. All my x values will always have a, a piece of the graph that exists. So when you write your uh, domain, you're going to say, okay, all x values, all real values. So that's negative infinity to positive infinity. And you have to use open parentheses for these whenever you write it in this notation. Because open parentheses is something you always use for the infinity because infinity is not like a real concept. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So now the range is kind of like the same thing as domain, except range is about the y values. So the y is this, this vertical line. So what y values exist in the graph? 
So let's kind of look at what, why, let's start at y equals zero, which is right here, and try to go up. Do I have an infin, uh, infinite amount of y values that I could possibly have? I'm pretty sure I could, right? Because if these lines just went forever, I would always have a, at least some y value. Even though I have a gap right here, I still have a piece of the graph over here that exists. So it's not like I have, a, I have to worry about that because this piece of the graph kind of takes care of that. So don't worry about the gap. So I have an infinite, infinite amount in the positive direction of y values. But what about if we start at y equals zero and go down? Do I have an infinite of y values? Mm, I don't think that's the case. If you look here at y equals negative two, the graph kind of bottoms out right there. So I have to, when I, when I specify the range, I gotta say, okay, it, it doesn't go down beyond this point. Now, I just wanna point out one thing. You see this red line, if it had, if we didn't have to cut it off, if, if it would have extended and gone down like this forever and ever, I wouldn't have to say that the Y value stops there because this would just go on forever and ever, right? But because we had to cut it off here because it was X greater than one only, that's why I have to say the range stops right there. So whenever you write the range, you say, okay, what are the X value, what, sorry, what are the Y values that exist? I've got, let's see, negative two up to positive infinity. And remember, infinity is always with the open uh, parentheses symbol. Now, the reason I wrote a uh, bracket here next to the negative two is because anytime you have a bracket, it means it's included in the graph. So this point is on the graph, therefore I have an open bracket. And that is piecewise functions in a nutshell, guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will answer your questions. See you guys in the next one.